I'm Jerome Aguian, and here's some of the top stories we have for you tonight. A closer look at the weather. The governor cuts the ribbon on a new Legion Hall. And the epic lit Amali. These stories and more are up next on News Channel 8. News Channel 8 is sponsored by Centennial. Centennial is joining AT&T for greater coverage, more innovation, and better service. In our top story tonight, everybody in the territory is looking at gloomy skies here in Paradise as the Hurricane 2010 season is in full swing. And it's our job to keep you informed as to the conditions in the Atlantic. When bad weather strikes here in the VI, we always want the latest information and the best sources. So we check in with the National Oceanic Administration Office in San Juan, Puerto Rico, with Danielle Sanchez, who's monitoring the Virgin Islands for us. Danielle, what's the latest on the update of that wave passing us by now? All right, well, since yesterday we have this tropical wave passing through our local region, and since yesterday in the afternoon it started affecting the VIs, and as, as of now the tropical wave is is right across the central Puerto Rico in the northern Atlantic waters. So we have a a lot of activity of showers and thunderstorms uh, affecting especially the Saint Croix area, and we expect. We expect this weather to continue through the through the night at least and through the early morning hours of tomorrow. Um, we just issue a flash flood watch for the whole VIs and including Puerto Rico. Also, a flood advisory has been issued uh, half an hour ago to Fort St. Croix, where it's having a bunch of thunderstorms and heavy rainfall. And basically, we just expect this weather to clear uh, for Wednesday. But for the rest of the week, it's going to be just after Wednesday. What you're going to have is uh, maybe passing showers in the early morning hours and the late afternoon due to the local effects. So it's going to be probably getting better through Thursday through Friday. We expect uh, the skies to be partly sunny with a few clouds only. Thanks, Danielle Sanchez. And we look again at the weather towards the end of the program, as always, here on your weather report. And in other news, an incident of domestic violence occurred this weekend on St. Thomas. Melody Rains, Virgin Islands Police Department Public Information Officer, reports. Police on St. Thomas arrested Karima Charles Clendenin and charged her with third degree assault and domestic violence. According to the police report, Clendenin was arrested shortly after midnight on Sunday, July 18th. Police said Clendenin and a 34-year-old male victim were arguing at an estate Bavoni residence when she sprayed air freshener in the victim's face and hit him several times with a frying pan. The victim received bruises to his forehead and left forearm but refused to seek medical attention. Because of the domestic violence charge, Clendenin was held without bail pending further court action. Thanks, Melody Rames. And the veterans in Frederickstead have been blessed with a new post to report to as a new American Legion Hall opened. On hand was the governor at the ribbon cutting ceremony. Let's take a look. On behalf of the legislature and the service of Vietnam veterans, we at least have something to begin covering the many walls that we have at this particular facility. And we okay. thank you. Okay. <laughs> Senator Uzi Richards, on behalf of the comrades and the auxiliary unit of 133, I accept this plaque to put on the wall. Thank you very much. On behalf of American Legion Post 85, Myron G. Donaldson, we present this plaque. To Commander Curtis Williams is concerning Bromley <coughs> Berkeley that died in Korea. He got a small history of his being in Korea. And it's a good part to hang on his wall. Mm. 
Again, Commander Celia of Post 85, I want to thank you for this beautiful plaque, and it will be hung in the place of prominence and the wall in this building. Thank you on behalf of all in commerce of 133, the Auxiliary 133. There's a lot of times people take this flag, this American flag, all glory, for granted. We have to think in terms of those veterans who are no longer here with us. Some died because of incidents that affected the conflicts and wars, and some died during the wartime um, conflicts. But as a veteran, we will understand when you hear someone talking about this flag, it means a lot to us. I don't know about you all, sometimes when you hear um, America, the beautiful and all that song, it's touching. So when you hear we talking about veterans and legionnaires, don't second guess, support the program, support the plan. On Memorial Day, on Veterans Day, I've seen over the last couple of years the increase in people who are in the street as we walk down and we go to the and we go to the grave sites. There are more young people, there are more families that are standing there cheering, and not cheering because of who we are, what the, they're cheering for, a feeling that they have, and the fact of what you have represented. And it was a very small part to be able to come here today and say thank you very much for everything that you do. Politicians will come and go, whether you're governor, lieutenant governor, senator, or delegate. What will remain is the sacrifices of the people who gave us the ability to run for these offices, to hold these positions, and that the Virgin Islands be exactly what we are, America's paradise within the Caribbean. So it's really an honor for me to be able to stand here and to just say thank you to all of you. For those that you remember today, as I'm sure we sit here, and you think of your friends and the family members and the impacts that it has. Because for each life that is lost, it has a tremendous impact on the community and on the family. We lose that next generation. We lose a lostness that takes place. But by doing what we're doing today in the town of Fredericks, that we've basically said we remember you, we admire you, and we will honor you. And congratulations to the veterans in Fredericksdad. And the Virgin Islands Water and Power Authority line crews will be performing voltage inspections on generators in the Gallows Bay area of St. Croix tomorrow morning, Tuesday. Service will be interrupted from 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. in the Schooner Bay Condominiums, the Gallows Bay Post Office, Gallows Bay Hardware, Chandler's Wharf, the Bank of St. Croix, and adjacent businesses serviced by Feeder 2. These inspections are part of the line department's ongoing field safety program, which is especially important as WAPA ensures its stability of its systems during the hurricane season. Motorists are asked to drive with caution in the work areas and to obey all traffic directions. The authority appreciates uh, the understanding of the public during the voltage inspections on generators in Gallows Bay. And again, that's tomorrow morning in the Gallows Bay area, so residents should be prepared for morning outages tomorrow. And when we come back from this break, we'll take a look at your Caribbean report. Stay with us.